Okay, so we have a single file open in Photoshop. This single file is in RGB color mode, which is red, green, blue. That's using the lights in the monitor to show us millions of colors, right? And we just did a rasterized rainbow gradient. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten it because it doesn't matter. So we don't need a white background here. The important thing is this is the same image size and resolution of our poster. Okay, now let me show you the, the cheap and terrible way to do it. If you go to filter and you go to filter gallery within Photoshop and you go to sketch and you go to halftone pattern, that is, I'm gonna set the colors to default black and white so you can see it a little bit better. So filter gallery, sketch, halftone pattern, you can set the size and the contrast, right? You can zoom out. And this is what Photoshop can do to imitate halftone dots, right? But notice they're not dots, are they? Even though our pattern type says dots. We can try circles. And then this is what it does which is really, really messes with you. So what we want is dots. If you do lines, these are all different ways of doing color separation, right? It looks like an old printer, it's terrible. So let's use dots. But what's the problem? Well, a computer doesn't see in dots, a computer sees in pixels. That's the problem. Also, this doesn't show us the cyan, the magenta, and the yellow, right? It just makes it black and white. So if you say OK, let's see what it does. It takes away all our color. So that sucks. So how can we get what I was just showing you, this kind of effect in Photoshop? I do not want you to do this with me. I'm gonna show you how you do it, and then I'm gonna show you the automated action that I've already given you that will do this for you. <laughs> but you can create your own action if you know these steps. First, you have to convert the mode from being the lights in the computer screen, which are red, green, and blue, RGB mode, to making the computer pretend it's seeing in terms of inks. So you have to convert it to CMYK color mode. And that will, in some instances, uh, dampen the saturation and intensity of your color because you're able to show more colors with light than you are with um, with the screen and you can see already it's interesting I don't know if you can tell on the projector but it, it kind of makes the gradation less smooth it's a little chunkier now the beauty of that is now we can go to view or uh, to window rather and go to channels. And I'm gonna move the channels up by layers so you can see it. And now we have CMYK channels. Whereas before in RGB, if we had channels, we would just have red, green, and blue. Now we have it separated out for, for yellow, for magenta and yellow, right? And for cyan. So this is what the printer is actually printing when it prints that, that rainbow, those three plates. And then because we did just a rainbow, we don't have any black in it at all. So cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Okay, now if I wanted to actually output those dots this is what I'd have to do. I'd have to turn off all the channels except for one. So the yellow. And notice how the yellow now, it's really beautiful actually, is in black and white. Because when you go to a single channel, that's how a digital computer sees color. A pixel is either turned on or it's not, right? So now what I go, I go to image mode and I change the CMY color 
K color to grayscale. I discard all color information. Okay. Then what do I do? Then I go, whoops. I actually have to delete these other channels. I can't just turn them off. So I have to drag them to the trash. And just leave the yellow. So pretty. Okay. Then I go to image mode, grayscale. I already did that. Now I go to um, bitmap mode. So bitmap is, if you remember from the first half of the class, it's an old term for raster files, for pixel-based files. But now it's used more for files that are either black or white pixels. So just the most basic pixels. So if you go to bitmap mode from grayscale, it will give you this series of options. And I'm going to say input 350 pixels per inch, right? Output, we want to put 350 pixels per inch. What method? We want to use a halftone screen. We don't want to use a diffusion screen, a sand pattern, anything else. We want the good old halftone screen. Then we say OK. Next, we get to say how big is this going to be. We want the frequency to be big enough to see. So not 300 you know, lines per inch. Let's make it pretty chunky. Let's make it only 20 lines per inch. Now this is yellow. Do you remember the degree that yellow should be? Not 50. It has to be at least 30 degrees off of black. But it's magenta and cyan that are 30 degrees off of black. Yellow is at 0 or 90 degrees. So I'm going to put 0 degrees. And then what shape do we want? We want it round, right? So we, then we say, OK. And here we have it. A 90 degree or 0 degree dot screen of where the yellow inks will be, OK? Then what do we do? Then we have to convert it back to grayscale. And when we convert it back to grayscale, because by the way, zoom in on bitmap, you'll notice there are no gray pixels whatsoever. A pixel is either black or white. That is bitmap mode. So now I convert it back to grayscale, but because I don't want it to actually make any grays, I, I use a size ratio of one pixel to one pixel. So size ratio of one. Same thing, now it's just grayscale, but you won't see any gray pixels. Then I select all the black with my magic wand with contiguous unchecked. It doesn't matter what tolerance you're at because it's going to select all or nothing, right? All the black is now selected. Then I'm going to color it yellow. But before I can color it yellow, I have to go to image mode and CMYK color. I could use RGB too. Okay. And now I get to say edit fill with a color. And then I can go to yellow and just get the brightest. I actually tend to like the more golden yellows at 100% and fill all of your screen with that. And then if you zoom in, you can see that that's made of just yellow ink, right? And 100% opacity. Then what do we do? Then we take that layer, select it all, copy it, and actually just go back to um, Save As. And we're going to call this CMYK-Yellow. And we're going to save it just as a JPEG to the desktop. And you don't need to do this with me, remember. It just shows you how labor intensive this is. Okay, now I go back in my history to before I deleted the channels, right? And then I go back to my channels and I go to the next one. I delete everything except the magenta. I'll try to be a little faster. I go to image mode. I change it to grayscale. 
I go to image mode, I change it to bitmap. I keep it at 350, it should remember my settings, I keep that, but the angle changes. What is it for magenta? It's 30 degrees off of black, right? Black is 45, so this is gonna be 15 degrees. I zoom in, I can see that. There we go, a 15 degree dot screen. Now, I change it mode to grayscale, one to one ratio. Then, I select all the black with the magic wand. Then, I go to image mode and change it to CMYK color. Then, I say edit fill with a color. Up, oh, it's going to pick the use the color I last used, so I need to actually choose the foreground color, go to a magenta, and I like to use a more red magenta, not a purplish one, kind of a hot pink, and I'll do that fill again. I'm going to use the foreground color at 100%. All right, now I'm going to save that. File, save as, CMYK magenta as a JPEG to the desktop. Go back in my history. I only have one more to do just to show you. Go back to before we deleted those channels. Go back to my channels. And get rid of everything except the cyan. The cyan is not very much, right? And then I say image mode, grayscale, image mode, bitmap, keep the settings but I change the angle. If this was 15, if black is 45, has to be 30 off of 45, this is going to be 75. You can go back to that slide for reference. Then I zoom in, I have to find a black. I use the magic wand, select it all. Oh, I have to first change it to grayscale. One to one ratio, select all the black. Change it to CMYK mode. Da -da -da -da. Pick a cyan foreground color. As saturated as possible. So I'm in the upper right hand corner. Edit, fill, 100%. And then we're gonna save that. File, save as, CMYK cyan. Save to the desktop. Okay, now, now I'm gonna go and open my poster file. There are some digital artists that all they do is use Photoshop and paint with gradients and colors and play between CMYK mode and different half tones, and just create beautiful textures and colors and um, backgrounds. And a lot of like the wallpapers you see are created that way. So this is like a weird way of just working in the computer with color and with process. That if it appeals to you, you can definitely spend a lot of time exploring. But this is all more about print communications than it is about you know designing a vision for art. Okay, so, ooh, that's not good. Okay, yeah, that's better. I was in channels and I was scared for a minute. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn these backgrounds off. I'm gonna turn all my other stuff back on, right? So this is what I had. Now I'm going to bring in these three files I created, these JPEGs, they're already the right size. It's going to drag them in. And then it's going to ask me to place them one by one. I just hit return. Oh, do this quick, do this quick, do this quick. And then in the next video, I'll be able to show you the, the really fast way to, to automate all of this that I've created for you. Because nothing I did required any creativity, right? It was just going through a lot of steps. Place it. 